going to be a real celebration. And so, of course, we must have champagne. What I have in mind is a classic hedgerow brew, elderflower champagne. And the elderflowers are in bloom right now. Hello there. Hi there. I'm teaming up with Steve and Noni. It's really nice to be picking them right at the beginning of the season because you can see all these next week, the week after, there's so many more to come. It's great, isn't it? With the lower branches stripped bare, desperate measures must be taken. Should we see if we get Noni on our shoulders? You ready? Yeah! <laughs> Aren't you now taller than, than we were on our own? Yeah. Don't walk off! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Listen, I don't mind you. I don't mind doing this, but do you have to put your keys in your back pocket? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Right. Thanks. I think. Great. I think that's been a complete success. Okay, it's quick. Well, we're good. Yeah. yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> to make enough champagne for the festival, I'm going to need a lot of elderflowers. That looks like a very fine haul. Not too bad. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Hey, girls. Um, who's going to stick around and give me a hand brewing? Who, who hasn't got anything better to do? Steve! <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well. I want over 100 bottles for the festival champagne bar, so I'm working in mega quantities. There we go. 10 kilograms of sugar is dissolved in 20 litres of hot water. It's divided between two bins, and each is topped up with cold water to 30 litres. In goes the juice and zest of 20 lemons, 10 per bin. Extra kick to it. We're using at least 120 elderflower heads. A handful in there. Finally, five Nine. tablespoons of white wine vinegar per bin, roughly speaking. I don't think that was quite enough in it. One of the really charming things about this recipe is you don't have to add any yeast. You know, normally with some hedgerow brew, you'd, you'd be adding brewer's yeast at this point. Is that because it's happening naturally? Yeah, exactly. It's because there is yeast in the elderflower. Okay. With a bit of luck. But the, the yeast levels in the elderflower vary. It's just depending on the year, depending on the weather. Uh, so it's an element of hit and hope. Our bins are covered and left in a cool, airy place. And with luck, fermentation should kick in in the next 24 hours. If nothing's happening within two days, I might put a pinch of yeast in, which would be a bit cheaty. But it shouldn't need it. I think they'll have the yeast. I think they'll have what it takes. A couple of days later, it's time to see if our elderflower brew has begun its journey on the road to Champagne. Mm -hmm. So, this one smells to me like it's doing more of what it's meant to do. I think this one is starting to get a bit of the same mould. Will that just be Beneath the fuzzy mould, I'm hoping some kind of fermentation is underway. I think whatever's meant to happen, it is happening in both, but that one has somehow got a day or two ahead. With festival numbers confirmed at over 800, I can't afford to lose half the brew. So I'm taking a risk. It's all or nothing. We're straining and mixing the two brews in the hope that both will come good. I think one of them was working and one of them sort of wasn't. And I hope that by putting the two together, the collective brew will now work. Pressure's on. Yeah, pressure's on. I don't want accusation circling of brewer's droop or anything like that. Certainly not. You know, this Why did you look at me when you said that? Well, because I was thinking, who can take the blame <laughs> if it doesn't work out? So I'm really hoping that our home brew has found its fizz. Steve? Yes? They're coming down the hill. Oh, no, I think if this falls flat... I'm going home. And I'm going to the off-licence. <laughs> no! Oh, look at that! That's unbelievable. Mmm. Oh, my God. I think that's sensational. I think that is the best hedgerow brew we've ever made. <laughs>